So let's talk about cell response to injury. So um, when a cell responds to injury, it's not an all or nothing type of phenomenon. The longer and stronger the stimulus is on the cell, the larger the amount of damage. But regardless of injurious agent, there are common biochemical themes important to understand. Um, we'll talk about hypoxia and reactive oxygen species and free radical injury first. So hypoxic injury um, is common, and the most common cause of that is ischemia. When ischemia occurs, there is a rapid decrease in mitochondrial phosphorylation, or oxygenation, which results in insufficient ATP production. When there's not enough ATP present to be used as a fuel source, the cells resort to anaerobic metabolism, also known as glycolysis. In glycolysis, Glycogen is used as a fuel source to generate ATP, but it's pretty inefficient and produces byproducts of lactic acid, which accumulates in the cells, causing a decrease in pH and nuclear chromatin clumping. In addition, mitochondrial damage can result in changes in membrane permeability, also loss of membrane potential and decreased ATP. Between the outer and inner membranes of the mitochondria, there are some proteins, um, and these can cause apoptosis. So in the mitochondria, either you have altered membrane permeability, loss of membrane potential, um, and an inability to make ATP, which causes necrosis or unprogrammed cell death, or due to the mitochondrial phosphorylation, you can develop pro-apoptic proteins, which causes apoptosis, or programmed cell death, to occur. Moving back to the um, effects of decreased ATP, a reduction of ATP causes the plasma membranes sodium and potassium pump, and also the sodium-calcium exchange to fail, leading to an accumulation of sodium and calcium. Right here talks about sodium and calcium, and that results in cellular swelling and diffusion of potassium out of the cell, causing dilation of the endoplasmic reticulum and detachment of ribosomes from the endoplasmic reticulum, which re results in reduced protein synthesis. However, at this point, if oxygen is restored, the injury could be reversible. If oxygen is not restored, Vacuolation occurs in the cytoplasm. Swelling of lysosomes and swelling of mitochondria occur. Calcium accumulates and activates several enzyme systems, including proteases, nitric oxide synthase, phospholipases, endonuclease, and it can cause cytoskeleton disruption, membrane damage, activation of inflammation, and DNA and chromatin degradation, along with ATP depletion. Increased permeability of the membranes causes continued loss of proteins. Essential coenzymes and ribonucleic acids are also lost and the substrates that are needed to reconstitute ATP are lost. As a result, this body, the cell will end in death. So as we said before, sometimes you can reverse the injury and have what's called reversible injury. However, when that occurs, the cells are at risk for reperfusion injury. Reperfusion injury occurs when excessive ATP consumption leads to an accumulation of the purine catabolites, hypoxanthine and xanthine. When reper reperfusion injury occurs, the influx of oxygen is metabolized by xanthine oxidase to make superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, which cause membrane damage and mitochondrial calcium overload, leading to the opening of a large conductance pore on the mitochondrial membrane, where escape of ATP and solutes leads to apoptosis. So let's talk about reactive oxygen species. Cells generate reactive oxygen forms as byproducts of meta metabolic reactions that reduce molecular oxygen to water. 
these reactive forms, called reactive oxygen species, can damage lipids, proteins, and DNA. Cells have antioxidant def defenses, but when free radical formation exceeds the cell's neutralizing capacities, free radicals accumulate in the cell and produce a conduction condition called oxidative stress. Free radicals, which are electrically uncharged atoms, have an unpaired electron and are unstable and will either give up or steal another electron in order to become stable. This makes it capable of injurious chemical bond formations with proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, which are all key molecules in the membranes and nucleic acids. Free radicals are difficult to control and can cause chain reactions. Oxidative stress is a very common type of condition that can be caused by inflammation, reperfusion injury, chemical injury, and radiation damage. When inflammatory responses are activated, there is an activation of endothelial cells, leukocytes, and platelets. These activated cells express adhesion molecules and pro-inflammatory cytokines that may further exacerbate inflammatory responses and cause endothelial cell injury and dysfunction. Wide-ranging effects occur through peroxidation of lipids, alterations of proteins causing fragmentation of polypeptide chains, and alterations of DNA. Oxidative stress, or reactive oxygen species, has a role in a wide variety of diseases and also age-related diseases, including cancer, neurologic diseases, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune, and cardiovascular diseases. Chronic exposure to reactive oxygen species and decreased DNA repair can result in persistent DNA mutations. Accumulation of DNA lesions can also lead to DNA double-strand breaks and disease onset and progression. Disease cells that turn can in turn develop reactive oxygen species and decrease the efficiency of the DNA repair mechanism. All types of cells are capable of making reactive oxygen species. Emphasis has been on inflammatory and vascular cells because of their widespread disease-causing effects. Um, some examples include angiotensin II, which can induce vascular muscle cell, smooth muscle cells to hypertrophy. Um, another example is hydrogen peroxide has been shown to induce proliferation and migration of endothelial cells. Reactive oxygen species act as mediators of vascular endothelial growth, fa growth factor, and they then modulate angiogenesis. In addition, activity of the extracellular matrix by matrix metalloproteinases, or MMPs, can be modulated also by ROS. Cytokines play a significant role in the progression of vascular lesions as well. One of the ways um, gene expression is increased is the activation of nuclear factor, which is a ROS-sensitive transcription factor and has a role in the expression of pro-inflammatory genes. So just to give you an example of how all of this is going to work at the systems level, we can think about atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is thought to lead to vascular endothelial injury. Um, so upregulation of adhesion molecule production in the endothelium is accomplished by ROS. Um, and that also diminishes nitric oxide synthesis activity and produce, promotes nitric oxide breakdown. The disturbance of vascular environment also causes a reduction in endothelial-dependent vasodilation. And this reduction has been implicated in causing other kinds of cardiovascular events, including vasoconstriction, vascular smooth muscle proliferation, hypercoagulability, and also thrombosis. Okay, so that's our overview of cellular injury.